Nice. Yep, right on. All right. So out of all the guys, you know, we, we get to fish with, there was one friend of mine that I've never gotten to fish with, I and mean, that's Sam Malazzo. Sweet, dude. Oh, I got a nice dolphin on. Really? There you go. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Half or just jump. It's probably going to be more Willem. I know that he has a tremendous reputation as far as being a uh, captain for a lot of different private boats, and he's had incredible success at the tournaments down here. Oh, I got one, too. Triple header. Oh, that's a nice that one, That is Rich. a good one, Rich. That's a real good one. <laughs> Yeah! Come on, come on! Oh! He ate it! He ate it! He ate it. Nice baby! Yeah, that's what I'm talking about! I thought you said you had to... Look at him, relax. Oh! Dude, nice. he just ripped my boat off! Oh! Awesome! Look at that big boy! K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Tom Rowland and Captain Rich Tudor. What's up, fellas? Hey, up, how Tom? we doing? How are we? Good morning. Sam, how are you? I'm doing great, man. We're just waking up. Looks like it's going to be beautiful out man, there today. looks amazing. You got a good plan for us? I think so. I hope so. Man, we're gonna too. See if we can catch a few dolphin, maybe. Uh, go to the hump. See if we can catch some tunas. Right on. If we can, uh, you know, connect on those two things, we'll come back in to the reef wrecks. See if we can catch maybe a sailfish, uh, maybe some nice mutton snappers. So. Right on, man. Yeah. Well, I've heard a lot of good things about you. I'm looking forward to fishing. I've heard a lot of good things about you. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's telling me if we get the filters good, we can uh, maybe even get the yellowtail snappers chummed up on top. Yeah, Sounds I got good. a little spot and shallow that we might be able to catch some pilchards. Okay. So. You guys need me to rig up any other rods? I brought a couple rigged up, but. I think we're pretty good. We're good to go. We'll finish this one and uh, should be. I let I let this. Are we ready to let the lift down? Are we sure. that yeah. far along? Yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay. Sam's been out there a bunch lately. He's been on them. Yeah, it's been good. We've definitely had a, a good dolphin season. So out of all the guys, you know, we, we get to fish with, there was one friend of mine that I've never gotten to fish with, and that's Sam Malazzo. I've known him for years, I see him at church groups and different things like that, but I um, always talk fishing and, and hear stories, and, and I really talk about his art career and other things like that, but I um, never got to fish with him. Why don't you take the wheel and take us to the promised right. land? Yeah, well, I've heard tons about Sam, never met him. Uh, in person and certainly never fished with him. So I was super happy to, to be able to go with him. I know that he has a tremendous reputation as far as being a, uh, a captain for a lot of different private boats. And he's had incredible success at the tournaments down here. The first time I ever heard of Sam was when the Florida Keys record for number of sailfish in one day was broken and it was broken by like a lot. And I think they caught 76 sailfish in one day and he was the captain on that. And of course, when you hear these things about someone, they're kind of larger than life, and I don't know what I expected, but Sam was not what I expected. I thought maybe, you know, this guy's gonna have a big ego, he's gonna be, you know, big hardcore tournament fisherman, and it could have been any further from the truth. He was the most humble guy that you could ever be around. He was looking to learn from everybody there. I mean, as soon as I met him, I'm like, are you Sam? I mean, I thought maybe he might have been the, the, the mate. He's cleaning the boat. He's doing all this stuff, putting in the work. And the breadth of knowledge that he has on the offshore fishing here is really impressive. Yeah, what we're going to do is there's current coming across the hump here. Yeah. And we're going to, as we pull into the current, we're going to make like a popcorn trail of these live baits. We're okay. going to throw the freebies. We're basically chumming with live bait. Um, so. You know, they'll start eating them, and as they eat them, they get closer to the boat. You like the sound of it. Up, you normally start just kind of trickling them, and then once you get them up busting, then you throw a little bit bigger scoop yeah. of bait, so. He knew that the tuna had been out on the hump, and the hump is exactly that. It is a hump in the middle of the ocean that is not too far off of Isle Morada. You go out there and the, the current is coming across it, just like this coffee cup. The current comes across like this, it upwells over just like a rock in a river, and that whole disturbance keeps the bait there, it keeps all the fish there, and it is a fish magnet. And the tuna are there regularly, and there's lots of other things there too. So there's a little button right here. There he is. Look at that. Just pop that up. Oh, looks nice. And, and uh, real. Oh, there we go. This one out of your way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's nice. You can get a couple extra rods out. That's cool, man. That is so cool, man. Frigate birds flying. Oh, Tune yeah. is popping. It's beautiful. It's <laughs> 
Yeah, and the cool thing about you know the way we're fishing those tunas there is it's visual. You want us to approach there, and as we're approaching, we're starting to toss out some of these um, pilchers, these live pilchers, as like a chum trail. He used it as a breadcrumb trail. He said, and it's just just drop them as you're going across the hump, going into the current. That current's probably running four or five miles an hour sometimes, but we're dropping those the, those pilchers off and basically creating a live chum line so that the tunas will come up and, and start following the boat and it didn't take long, man. They started coming up and popping, and we threw out a big scoop and they're popping, and that is really exciting. When they're, when they're hitting the surface, big boils, um, and you know if you can get a bait back there, you're gonna get bit. Boy, those tunas are strong. Crazy, even, yeah. even the small ones, yep. they fight. Yeah, these, the fish on this hump are not giant, but they're nice, nice little, you know, they're big enough to have a little fun with. Yeah. Oh, that one's barely hooked. Nice. Yep, right on her. All right. Very good. Tom likes his sushi now. <laughs> Sushi's Sweet. good. Very cool. Sweet, dude. Oh, I got a nice dolphin on. Really? There you go. Yeah. Yep. How about that? Yeah, for just jump. It's probably going to be more with him. That's awesome. We'll catch him. Yeah, he grew up down here, you know, fishing on all kinds of different boats. So he really learned some, learned from some of the legends in, in the offshore industry. He uh, ran quite a few boats here out of Hawks Cay for years. And so he's, he's uh, very versatile. And then um, one of the things that excites me is this big dolphin in the summer. And he's a guy that, man, out of everybody I know, he tends to just catch those big ones all the time. And these tournaments and things like that, he's been winning these, these dolphin tournaments in the summer. So um, to get to spend a day with him and learn from him and, and uh, it, you know, just soak up some of that knowledge was, was awesome. The watercolor is a little off. I don't know if you can tell that. It's not real blue like it is sometimes. There he is. Yep. There he is. Yeah, there's nice quite one. a few more. If there's one right here on top. You can probably so you get him on that fly. Right there. there you go. And when you guys are talking about this, I had brought a fly rod with us because I thought maybe, you know, you get in that situation and you get these things popping behind the boat and it might be a good opportunity to catch one on fly. He was into it. He was like, yeah, yeah, let's try that. Let's do that. So I kind of thought, well, if you're going to do it, do it first because after you catch a couple, they might get harder to catch. So if we're going to do it, like, let's do it early. And if it's not working, then I'll just go to whatever. He ate it that time. Yeah, there nice. you go. That's I sweet. Had it weed all over. I know. <laughs> Did you see that? That was the trick. It made the fly bigger and, and he ate it. There's one more, right? <laughs> yeah, there's a little, another little guy. That's a nice one, Tom. Yes, sir. <laughs> right on. Oh, I got one too. There Triple go. header. Triple, Triple header. header. Oh, that's a nice that one, Rich. That's a good one. That's yeah. a real good one. Another wow. nice gaffer. Wow, the circle look at looks, that. I thought we were going tuna fish. I thought so too. <laughs> hey, that's the beauty about fishing in the Keys, man. You just, yeah. you just never know. <laughs> the bull sharks after him, oh my oh, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you can just see them immediately come up. The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Hawks K, find what lures you. Lowrance, America's number one fish finder. Waypoint, the destination for outdoor entertainment. Mercury Marine, go boldly. St. Croix Rods, the best rods on earth. And by Ameritrail Trailers. Daiwa. Marathon. Black Rifle Coffee Company. Salt's Gone power pole, and reflex boat decking. Oh, look at him jumping. <laughs> Triple header, man. While we're, do while we're tuna fishing. Yep. Wouldn't think it's... Yep. One more nice one there. Yeah, there is a nice Dolphin one. Dolphin season. You see another one in the water? Yep. Yeah, how about that? that? <laughs> now we did it. The tuna, you know, that's the draw out there on the hump, and it's mostly what we're catching out there are the blackfin tuna. But the best thing that happened at that spot was that um, all of a sudden we're kind of moving from one spot to another, and we're kind of trolling our, our baits as we're moving, and the mahi come in, and we hook a pretty nice mahi. And as you know, they tend to travel in, 
in schools tend to be, if you hook one, there's probably way more there than that. And as we're bringing this fish to the boat, of course, we see them swimming all around. They are fun, man. They're they one are. of my favorite fish. A uh, dolphin is the, the staple. They you check know? a lot of boxes, that's for sure. Sure do. Beautiful. How about that? Acrobatic. When you take somebody out that's never been fishing in the ocean and you catch one of these fish, it's so beautiful and colorful and they jump and they that's do everything sweet. like they're supposed to and then they taste great. Yeah, Sam hooked this really nice, nice mahi. You know, we started getting things ready because we were thinking there would be more coming in. And, and you know, as soon as we could see his, there's another one. I think I, th I threw out there and hooked another one. And then you got the old fly rod out and you were just stayed persistent. And finally, I guess you stripped it fast enough or got him, got him riled up somehow. And he just came up and crushed it. It was a cool bite. Then actually it went into the grass. I don't know what happened, but one of the very few fish that I've ever had that come over and eat the fly, the weeds, everything. <laughs> All while having a fish in your hand. <laughs> Got him? Let's see if I can do this delicately before he freaks out. How did I hook mine first and you guys? Because you're the captain, <laughs> dude. Yeah, that's I don't know what's taking so long to, to catch yeah. him, Sam. There you go, Rich. Pass that right down. Yep. The gunnel. Well, that's interesting. I never never thought about that, but you know, all the things they feed on probably hide in the grass and they oh, probably for sure. eat it. I mean, all you gotta do is pick that grass up. I do it with my kids all the time. You pick up that sargassum weed and you just shake it on the on the deck. And man, there are shrimp and little fish and everything, small crabs. There's all kinds of stuff in that grass. And that's exactly why those fish are there. It's exactly why they follow that grass. That's exactly why you wanna look at big, any big grass map because there's probably fish there. There's so much food in there. Man, we got fish and a salad. Look at that. That's a, that's a whole dinner right there. Here, I'll get your rod. Nice job, dude. We end up catching three really nice mahi out of that bunch. These were, you know, what we call gaffer size, you know, a little, a little too big to just sling in. Great eating fish. And, you know, after all that chaos went offshore, Sam was, you know, telling us that earlier in the day that, he, you know, he had this cool thing going on, on the inshore side where, where he had a spot where he thought we could chum up some of these big yellowtail snappers. And I love catching yellowtail snappers. And I even love it more when you can get them up on the surface busting on, on, on live bait. Uh, this is a spot called the Eagle Wreck. Yep. We're just going to put a couple baits out. Uh, see if we can catch a sailfish. We've been catching some bigger yellowtails on the live bait up on top, but we're doing something similar like we did at the hump. We're taking these live baits and just throwing a bunch of free bait, you know, without a hook in them and uh, kind of right just use them as chum. We got to the, the wreck that he wanted to get to and, uh, and set up and, uh, and started throwing out bait. Uh, you know, it was, it was, it was a little different. I, I've really not fished for yellowtail snapper without ever putting out a block of chum or whatever. And, and, and uh, he just, he didn't see any reason for it. He just wanted to just, just live chum. Um, so we anchored there, started throwing out pilchards and it didn't take long, you know, smash here, bust there. And then as you're looking at this, it was these, you know, this beautiful yellowtail snappers coming up on the surface, chasing these, these pilchards. And I mean, really aggressive bites. Got him on. Oh, I got a bull shark. That's what I got. Do you really? He's coming. <laughs> Almost. Coming for whatever you got. And it's a yellowtail. That's a nice yellowtail. Yeah, bull sharks think so too. Bull shark was right on his tail. Is that, is that what you did, Sam? You just dropped it straight down? Yep, I just let it go. He ate it. Wow. I mean, there's a lot of fish right here. They're just. Now, is know. that belly hooked? Nope. They seem like the nose hook bait, and I did one a little smaller. Okay. I'm Captain Sam Malazzo. I'm a charter boat guide out of the Florida Keys, born and raised here. My dad was a mobile marine diesel mechanic, and he would go work on all these boats. And uh, me and my brother, we would tag along and, you know, we'd find fishing line tied together, find an old hook and fish off the dock. So when we got old enough to do it professionally, uh, my dad was friends with all the charter boat guides. So it was real easy to get on a boat and, and help out and start to learn. I charter fished for a long time. Um, that kind of transitioned into more of a private clientele. People that own their own boats that hire me to, um, you know, take them fishing. That kind of transitioned into doing more tournament style fishing. You know, I've done a lot of dolphin fishing tournaments a lot of sail fishing tournaments and we've had you know some pretty good success yeah we started a team four or five years ago now a, a boat called executive decision uh, we won the skippers tournament two years in a row i think it was uh, 2017 and 18 which is hard to win once so we felt very fortunate to be able to do that twice two years in a row back to back i took an art class my senior year in high school and that wonderful teacher taught me how to shade then I didn't really do it for a long time. One day I drew a sailfish and people seemed to like it. So I've always um, you know, drawn or painted uh, for myself, but over the last few years, uh, people have taken a lot of interest in, 
and have made some pretty significant investments in my art, so I've gotten a little more serious about it. One of my favorite pieces, which is also one of my most popular pieces, is uh, a scene I call Born and Bred, which kind of, when I think of the Keys and growing up here, it kind of has all that in it. Alligator Lighthouse with a sailfish and a warbird, and there's a hurricane in there, and it's, when I think of the Keys, that's what I think of. There he is. Nice. There he is. The bull shark's after him, oh my oh, goodness. Yeah. <laughs> wow, you can just see him immediately come up. Yep. Rich uh, reached out to me. Me and him have been friends for you know a few years now. It's kind of surprising we haven't gotten together sooner, but I'm glad you know we finally did it. Nice yellowtails, man. Look at the size of that thing. <laughs> nice. Uh, this time of year, like I said, it's a transition time of year. Your summertime fish are kind of on their way out, and the wintertime fish are not quite here yet. But sometimes if you time it just right, you can get the best of both worlds and you can have some pretty epic fishing. Um, it, it tends to be not as consistent as some of the other times of year, but this can be one of the best times of year to, to just have one of those big days, a banner day. Hey, what do you guys think about maybe running up the road and catching, trying for a big mutton snapper or All something? about it, man. We're with you, Cap. Yeah, I mean, we had a few bites here, some action, and it was exactly It was exactly what you said it was going to be. Yep. A big right. yellowtail on the surface. Yeah, the yellowtails are smart, but we tricked a couple of them. Yep. Yep, we're with you, man. All right, here we How go. How far are we going? It's about seven miles. Okay. So Sam had this spot that he wanted to take us to at the end of the day that was, um, you know, a mutton snapper spot, and, and he was very confident. You know, um, it was really kind of out there in no man's land. It wasn't a wreck. It wasn't a big reef out there. I think it was like you know 150, 200 um, some feet. Not a lot of structure out here. It's more of a live bottom, like a natural bottom. There is something here, but it's you know when the spot's like really lively, yeah. you'll you can see where the structure is just because there's so much bait on it. Some of my best mutton spots, like right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And some of the best mutton spots, you really don't mark a lot. Even the bigger wrecks, we'll catch our fish, I mean, sometimes 300 yards off the wreck. They just kind of use that as like a home base or something. There's a nice fish, Mark. That's a big fish. Suckers right on the bottom. I think I like that other mark better, though. The one right down here. This one here, even. Okay. It's, it's kind of like, that's where I normally catch my muttons, is, is believe it or not, on stuff that yeah. is not as solid. And we got rigged up. It was kind of cool because it was a great opportunity to use the burning rod holders where we could um, just bounce the, the, the bottom with it, you know, lead and a long leader and uh, try to catch these big snappers. Yeah, and you know, Sam had the rig set up. He was confident in what we were seeing. We weren't really marking a lot, but he just had caught them there before. And so we make a drop and you know, almost immediately we're getting bit. Got him, got him on. Yeah, I'm just trying to release it. How about I, that? I can't remember how to do it. Underneath. Do it. Just pick it up. Oh, I got one too. There you go, take. There he ah, is. That didn't take long. How about that? Is this way out now? It's not a real big one, but it's a fish. Are you bit too? I was. And coming up with you know what seems to be some sort of bottom fish. It never seemed like it was going to be a mutton snapper on the first bite to me because the thing just wasn't really fighting that hard. The mutton snapper that I've caught in that depth of water really pull drag, they really pull. So I was like, I don't know what this is. That's pretty good to get bit that fast yeah. though. Action. I don't know if it's a mutton, but. What else would you expect? There's some jacks, you know, some smaller amber jacks and stuff. Normally the muttons here are nice ones. Like, you know, they, they blister the drag a little bit. Let me unhook it. Don't mind. Or just pull it up. Yeah, because we won't be able to wind anyway. All right. Wow. How about that? Red snapper. That is cool. Beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. <laughs> so pretty How about one. that? Bet you they're stacked up here. All right, we got to vent him and set him down, right? Yep. And it turns out it was a true American red snapper, which is a relative of the mutton snapper, but not exactly the same fish. It doesn't seem to fight as hard 
And the problem with the American red snapper is that there is no season on them, or if there is a season, it's very, very short. Yeah, that's a, it's a rare catch for us. I mean, that's only about the third time in my whole life that I've ever caught the, the, the American reds out here. Um, in the Gulf, they seem to be very plentiful, and up on the west coast of Florida, I know the guys catch them all the time, but, but um, down here, the, they're, they're not as common, and, um, but it was really cool. They are a beautiful fish. They have that pink color that's just so unique, coloration that you just don't see very often in fish. So it was a kind of a cool treat to catch them. Oh, nice red snapper. Woo. Wow. There you go. Beautiful. Where's your fish, wow. sir? There it is. <laughs> Man, that is pretty. Down there. So the two reels that I've been using for offshore and, and uh, tarpon and things like that this year, one, it's been the BGMQ, uh, and then also the brand new Saltiga from Daiwa. They're both really great reels, absolutely incredible. Um, this is more of a price point reel. It is super high quality. I'm using the 8,000 size here, um, which has enough line capacity to get on a uh, you know, 40 pound braid all I need there, or I'm um, even stepping up to 50 pound braid in some situations. Um, not too heavy, not too light. I can cast it, I can catch big tarp, and I can catch a uh, mahi offshore, tuna, all kinds of different things. Really good, uh, versatile situation. Wonderful for sharks and other things. Very lightweight, great drag, really nice setup. Uh, this is really all the reel you ever need. Certainly great for charter fishing, just your average um, fishing. But if you do want to step it up to the absolute best, and, and it is a pleasure to use, this this Saltiga is top of the line. These are Daiwa's best quality reel. It has the smoothest drag I've ever seen in my life. Everything is just so sealed and, and protected. Just the smoothest gear is just beautiful looking it's really a pleasure to fish and when I am using these reels there's a couple things whether it's the top of the line or, or any of the other options it's just simple things to take care of them so they last a long long time it's one uh, spray them off at the end of every day um, I don't just spray them with um, just regular fresh water every day I even use the uh, salts gone product it just is safe for all the drag system it's safe for for the line and everything else but it really gets every inch of salt out of this reel so there's not that little corrosion around anything and then I just sham them off real quick at the end of the day and the other thing that's really important a lot of people don't think about is back off the drag uh, on these reels it helps to relieve the pressure on those drag washers and plates so backing off the drag at the end of the day um, really helps too but uh, these are the new reels that I'm using from Daiwa check them out The Hawks K Saltwater Experience, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Hook. Tackle Direct, the world's premier fishing outfitter. Yeti. And by Berno and Rod Holders. Wiley X. Nikon. Buff. Lithium Pros and Golden Boat Lifts. Did you know you can get every episode of Saltwater Experience completely free on Waypoint TV? Go to waypointtv.com and find out how you can download the app or find it on any smart TV. And if that's not enough, you can find the Tom Rowland Podcast on Apple, Spotify, or anywhere you find podcasts. And we'd love to have you as a follower on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. What do you got there? Seems like a bigger fish. It was the type of fight that could be yeah. <laughs> that nice mutton. And it's scoping up pretty good now. Is that a good sign? I think so. Or it could be another Key West wreck shark. Just never know. You just never know. It's a saltwater fish, be my guess. We did have a fantastic day. I thought that the best part of the day was definitely not the fish we caught, but it was just having a good conversation with Sam. I learned a ton about how Sam, you know, uh, strategizes for all of these different things that he's doing, whether that's a charter with his private client or if it's a, uh, a tournament or all these different things that he's learned. And you know what, just like he was saying, like, if you just remain humble and, and look to everyone, as someone who can teach you something, you can really, really learn a lot. And you know, for that reason, he is one of the best. I mean, I really do believe that that is why the best are the best, is that they, they are willing to learn from anyone. And 
you know, Sam and I had a lot of talks through the day, and that was what came through loud and clear to me, is that he felt like he could learn from anybody. Really cool to see. Big snapper, nice. We were nowhere near this, this might spot. might be healthy enough to yeah. let him go right now. Kind of weird, I feel like the smaller ones sometimes do better. I don't know why that is. This guy's look feeling good. He's ready for another, another go at it. Well, we have had a great day, dude. Caught a little bit of everything. Dolphin, tunas, beautiful fish. Tails. Yep, we didn't get Red beat up doing it. <laughs> he goes right down. Appreciate you guys He's having gone. me out. Thanks, nice man. Job. Yeah, love it. Yeah, very man. cool. You're an easy to get. You're an easy guy to spend the day with. Well, I feel the same way. Had a good time. It was I liked pleasure. It. Pleasure being on the boat with you guys. We even caught some fish. That was like a bonus. <laughs>